Hello guys! Today's project is going to be all about taking an old vintage photo of someone that was in your family, a loved one, um, maybe someone that you never got to meet, and, but this photo has been in your family, um, showing them in black and white, and today you are going to learn how to turn it into a colored photograph. So this project was special for me because I got to use a photo of my grandmother um, who passed away about maybe seven years ago now um, and I spent a lot of time with her as a kid so I was really excited to take this young photo of her as a nurse and recolorize it, revitalize it. So of course your first step is to pull the original photo into Photoshop and duplicate that background layer as always that way you preserve that background copy if you ever need to change something. But then your next step is going to be to go into just Google and find a photo that you believe has similar colors to what you want to use um, or what you want to pull out in your black and white photo. So um, that in mind, it does not have to be a high quality photo. It does not have to be a copyright free photo. This is one of the few times that you can just pull from Google um, because we just need the color palette. We're not using anything from the photo except the colors. In this instance, I'm going to use the colors of a little bit of the outfit and the colors of the face and hair a little bit. Um, so again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be high quality. It doesn't need to be copyright free. Just find something that is going to be like the colors that you want to use for your project. So as you see me doing on screen, I've gone ahead and cut out or just basically selected and deleted all parts of the um, image that I dragged and dropped onto here of that other nurse from Google and just got rid of everything in the background. Um, this is just isolating the face so that we can create a color palette from that face. Next you're going to go over to the side and find the eyedropper tool and you are going to um, go to the top left of the Photoshop platform and make sure that you have sample size as 5x5 five five average because you don't want to pick up a single point of noise like the color from a single point of noise but the average color in that area. So make sure that again that sample size 5x5 five five average and then you're going to uh, do the sample to all layers making sure that you can sample from all layers. Then you're ready for the next step which is to take that eyedropper tool and pick out a few different um, values essentially. First the brightest area of skin. What you can do is um, press alt on a PC or option on a Mac and click to kind of toggle to the um, eyedropper tool and then using a paintbrush make sure it's turned up to 100% opacity not like mine you're just going to paint off to the side that brightest um, brightest area that brightest color. Then what I like to do next is get the darkest um, the darkest value or darkest color on the skin. So again, you can press option on your Mac uh, to toggle to the eyedropper tool and um, click the darkest area of the skin and then paint that off to the side. Now I recommend having at least two more values in between. So kind of the next lightest, um, slightly darker than your lightest tone and the next darkest slightly um, lighter than your, I'm sorry, did I say that backwards? Slightly, um, lighter than your darkest tone and slightly darker than your lightest tone. So you have this four, um, four different colors that create like the gradient from light to dark. And we just need those colors. We don't really even need the photo. So you can just copy and paste that onto a no, new layer and turn off um, the layer with the, the photo that you pull from Google. Keep that palette, that, that color palette as your topmost layer. But then go ahead and click on down to your um, background layer, the actual photo that you're working on. And then at the very bottom, you're going to apply an adjustment. At the adjustment icon, you're going to click a gradient map. So it's going to create a layer that is a gradient map. On that layer that it creates, you're going to see those two little icons. Um, make sure it is clicked on the leftmost one so that it changes what it needs to change. Um, and then you'll see kind of when I raise my mouse, it's going to go up to where you see properties and adjustments and so on. Properties is where we're going to be working. So what you're going to do next with that left icon clicked is go ahead and click in that colored bar kind of there under properties. And it's going to open up this dialog box where you have that colored bar a little more stretched out. Now what's really interesting about uh, gradient maps is it can take 
any set of colors that you give it and apply it to your range of values from light to dark on an image. So in this case, I'm going to click my um, the box on the far left and use the eyedropper tool that automatically generates to click that dark brown um, color from our color palette. And then for my far right value, I'm going to click that little colored box at the bottom of that value scale and use the eyedropper tool to select the lightest value. And then I'm going to add in some additional um, values in between with those um, those medium values, those those a little bit a little bit darker than the lightest and a little bit lighter than the darkest colors. Um, and you can kind of drag them around to see what looks best for your photo to apply what works for yours because everyone's going to be a little bit different. So go ahead and play with this a little bit. And you can also change this at any point in time. So don't feel like whatever you land on has to be the end all be all. It, it can be a working, um, a working gradient map <laughs> for lack of a better word. So once you're happy playing with that gradient um, mask layer, we are going to click OK and change the blend mode. So normally at the top, the uh, blend mode is set to normal. We are going to change this to color and you're about to see a drastic difference on this. Once you set it to color, then it looks like a pretty normal picture so far, like maybe not black and white, but vintage again. But remember, this is just going to be for the skin. So to the right of that little icon that remember I said to make sure you click on the icon on the left of that layer, you're going to click on the icon to the right. And this is the mask part of the gradient map. So this map mask, I'm sorry, works the same as any other layer mask where anything you paint black is going to erase and anything you paint white is going to bring it back. So think of it as just like the color overlay and we are going to fill that with black to start and then use a paintbrush with a soft edge um, and you can adjust your flow as we're doing this which is just kind of like the amount of quote unquote paint that they're you're allowing the brush to put on at a time. Um, but you're going to paint just the skin on this layer mask with white and that is going to bring out that gradient color map um, onto the skin by itself. I do recommend to go ahead and um, kind of detail the edges like get in close and clean up the edges uh, so that's not going into your hair, um, so that it's not going into your eyes, not going into your teeth. Go ahead and paint over top of your lips. I think this does bring out a more natural color for your lips if you don't want lipstick. Um, but again, remember black erases, white brings back. So if I color it over top of my eyes, right now I'm going to paint with black to make sure that they're not skin toned. So the next step has to do with the darkest and lightest areas of the face because apparently in photos, the darkest and lightest areas have less color than the midtones. So we're going to go back to that layer and we are going to the effects, which has the blending mode option. Um, but don't do like I did and select this um, effects while you are on the mask. Go back to the leftmost icon so that you can click the blending and apply some changes to the darks and lights. So you can see as I pull over the darks inward and the lights inward as well, it's going to look a little bit harsh. So what you can do is if you're working with a Mac again, hit option or a PC hit alt and split each of those little things into halves. And it just creates a little bit of a softer blend and you can play with these until they look about right and then click OK. Don't forget you can check and uncheck that preview to see the difference. It's just going to be a slight difference, but still. And then you can go back into your gradient map and make some adjustment to those colors if you'd like um, pulling the toggles or if you click the color you can actually change several different aspects like the hue for the H, the saturation, and then right underneath that is a B for brightness. I accidentally clicked the wrong one um, on screen first, but that is the correct one, not the RGB beneath it. So HSB up top is hue, saturation, brightness, and you can play with those and see if changing any of those colors um, actually benefits the skin tone for your image. 
Now we're on to the last step for the actual skin. And we're gonna go down to the bottom again, the adjustments, and add a layer for uh, specifically hue saturation. So you can click hue saturation and see another layer pop up over top of your gradient map. Now at the top again under properties, that's where we're gonna be working again with those little toggles. Now this layer is gonna be for creating a um, kind of sense of blood underneath the skin. So this is the only uh, part of the image that you're gonna have to do this for as far as changing it to red. So we went from master to reds on that little drop down box. And um, you're gonna click the little hand to the left of that reds to, um, to use the eyedropper tool to select kind of the middle of the forehead, a mid-tone there. And turn up the saturation. Oh, I'm sorry, first you're gonna change the hue until you get this red hue. Turn up the saturation until your person looks a little bit like a devil. And uh, turn down the lightness a bit so it's not such bright red. And we are going to mask this like we did before um, by using that little mask section on the layer and filling it with black. And then we're just gonna paint all the places that typically would have blood flow under the skin. So think under the nose, I'm sorry, under the eyes, the nose, under the cheekbones, ears, lips, and neck if it's showing. Um, at the very bottom of the property setting, you can pull out this kind of range here and it'll make it smoother, kind of encompass more areas. Um, just adjust it to the best of your ability and then you're ready to go to that layer mask. Whenever you go to that layer mask, or the mask part of this hue saturation layer, you are going to be using a, again, soft um, round paintbrush. We're gonna turn flow all the way down to 5%. Now again, this is the rate at which paint is applied. And we're only gonna paint this on to the places with the most blood flow underneath the skin in real life. So start with underneath the eyes generally the tip of the nose, under the cheekbones. So if you're a girl and you know kind of like how you would go under the cheekbones for contouring with a little bit darker color, you're gonna do this with the red for the blood flow and it kind of comes across as blush a little bit on the image. And on the lips as well, that can also give somewhat of an appearance of um, lipstick, but we do have blood flow on our lips so we do need to make sure you do that there as well. And then on the neck, you kind of have that V, those uh, muscles that make a V from your, underneath your ear, underneath your jaw, um, coming down to the center of your neck. So you can kind of paint in some red in there by painting white. You're not actually painting red. Remember, you're using a mask layer. So uh, black erases, white brings back. So whenever you paint white, you are pulling out the red on these areas of the face. It doesn't really seem like a lot has happened, right? But watch the difference when I toggle it on and off. It's slight, but you can tell there is a difference and it really makes um, the person look more alive. Just like always, go ahead and clean up your layer mask. Make sure you don't have um, a red blood flow showing on the teeth or anywhere it's not supposed to be. And then you're ready for the next steps, which is to add that hue sat slash saturation layer for each individual um, part of the photo that you wanna color. So in this case, I'm gonna start with the hair. And what you want to do is at the top of the, where it says properties, kind of drag the hue until you find a color that you like. One thing I forgot to do at the very start of this was, if you see down at the bottom, it says colorize you need to hit colorize before you start this or it's going to look really crazy like mine is right now. Um, but I'm trying to kind of get the color of the hair and ignoring how all else of the picture looks. So as long as the hair color looks realistic, that's going to be fine with me. And then once I get the hair color to my liking, uh, I'm going to do the same thing that we did before and fill the mask part of this layer with black and then paint only where paint white only where the hair is. Um, on these layers for all the other objects, you can play around if the normal blend mode looks best or the color blend mode looks best. Sometimes it was the color for me, sometimes it was the normal one. And you'll see as I do a speed through of all these different parts of the photo 
um, how I kind of play with the different blend modes. So just to recap, for all the rest of the like sections of the picture, you are going to do that hue saturation layer and mask out just for the, um, I'm going to call it object that you're working on. So for instance, uh, I worked on the hair as one hue saturation layer. I worked on the hat and clothes and whites of the eyes and teeth on another layer. And I worked on the colored part of the eyes on another hue saturation layer and the lipstick on another layer and the background on another layer. And you check colorize at the top, play with the color you want, fill the mask with black, paint out just the sections that you want to show in that color and clean it up on the mask and play with the blend mode if it's going to be normal or color, whichever looks best. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you would like to see the final outcome, you can skip to the end. Thanks, guys. Have fun.